guys so uh today i'm going to give you guys an update on how my uh, season with bimmer challenge has been going and also on the f80 um, that i have back now but uh we'll start off with bimmer challenge so this is round run at chuckwalla i ended up running a 205.8 which was not my personal best um out of all the times i've been there uh the fastest i've ran here is a 204.2 i think and uh yeah i don't know what was going on i pulled up to the track first session and my rotors were extremely warped which was crazy because i would drove the car there and didn't feel any um vibration to the brake pedal at all so i have no idea how they got so warped like i legit pulled off my first session and uh jacked up the car took off the wheel and, and looked for any cracks in my rotors because it really felt that bad but nonetheless, I still finished, uh, I think, fifth place. So I was able to rack up five points. Um, this is one of my favorite tracks. It's pretty technical, pretty fast. Um, it's got a, you know, different variation of turns and, and straights and uh, corkscrews and slow turns. So it's a good little mix of everything, honestly. Um, the one pain in the ass about this track is driving out there. It's like halfway between um, LA and Phoenix, so it's pretty far. Um, but this bull turn coming up, it's pretty epic. And that corkscrew that I just hit, the camera really doesn't do it any justice um, because of the angle, it's like the fishbowl angle or the fisheye angle. Same with that bowl. That bowl is a lot, uh, I guess, steeper than it looks. <clears throat> back to back apexes right here. Keeping it in third gear, getting on the gas, swinging wide, and then uh, it's a pretty big hairpin right here. Um, there's multiple ways to take this turn. Um, I kind of found swinging wide and then slowly closing the radius back in is uh, best for me. And then we cross the finish line right there. So we're here at uh, Button Willow doing CW13. Coming across the finish line, fourth gear. Um, I ended up, this was round two of Bimmer Challenge. I ended up getting, uh, finishing this day with a 2028. That was the PB um, in my first session. I uh, only got to run one session really. My second session, I had some electrical problems going on. Um, almost caught the car on fire. It was, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty uh, stressful too. Um, so I was only able to get out one session really um, and I mean didn't necessarily put in a hot lap my PB on this track is a two two flat uh, sorry two minute point eight so not necessarily a two flat because two flats a little better than that um, I was hoping for a sub two um, but couldn't pull it off with just one session um, but other than that going to the bus stop right here trying to cut as much of this curb to the left as possible and then your fourth gear just flat out through here off the gas if you need to but for the most part you can stay on the throttle at least partial throttle holding it around like 95 to 100 miles an hour through this turn next turn you're hitting at about 110 115 before you come to Phil Hill and you have to slow down uh, swing left and then hard right to hit the apex now if you start to understeer or oversteer going over phil hill the best thing to do is just give more throttle um putting more power down to get grip to those wheels um because the car's really light up top uh, so it's kind of normal for it to lose grip if you're not on the throttle coming through the s's right here i don't know exactly what this part of the track is called uh but Almost to the finish line here, fourth gear, almost to red line. Break, downshift to third, and then punch out, hit the apex. And then that is the lap at Button Willow. So excuse my heater going on in the background, but I just wanted to show you there were some updates I did to the car. Um, haven't been to the track since, but uh, 
I got my 4K, uh, sorry, my four point roll bar uh, welded in uh, by some dudes out here in Lake Forest. They did a really good job. Those welds are super nice, man. I'm gonna check this out. I don't know if that's, if you guys can see it, but they're pretty nice welds. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna get the X done in the back, like you see on my F80 uh, or any of the RSR cages. Uh, what else did I have done? Oh, uh, major one was solid bushings now in the diff and in the subframe. Hope you guys can see them. And I got rear lower control arms, or rear camber arms as they're called on the E36. Uh, oh yeah, carbon fiber sunroof panel, I removed it. So it weighs about 35 pounds with the cassette and the, uh, the panel itself, the metal panel. Uh, I had Dave at JHP make this one for me, weighs 1.8 pounds. I put epoxy to seal it on the top as well, around the edges. Um, but I think I could have just gotten away with putting epoxy along the edges inside here and it would be fine. Um, I've driven on the freeway at over uh, 80 miles an hour uh, and have no wind noise, no flapping, nothing going on. Uh, yeah, it's pretty solid. Uh, but other than that, that's the only things I've done so far. Uh, that's the update on the E36. Now let me give you a sneak peek of what, the, what I got here for the F80. Bam. So you can turn these around. Oh, can't turn them around. SM10s with some NTO1s for the track. But we're not going to use those for the track. No, no, no. We've got some of these here. Pirelli DHs. Legit race slicks. 285 in the front, 385 in the rear. Will be nice and meaty right there. We should have no issues with uh, uh, turn exit oversteer. Hopefully. Yep, but that'll do it for this video, guys. Take it easy. If you guys like the video, please like, subscribe, comment below if you got any questions. And uh, my Instagram is in the, the description of the video. If you have any questions, you can hit me up there. And I'll get back to you guys as soon as possible.